Uh, good evening. I hope you all are safe and your ones are safe there. Uh, uh, so, as Abhijit has said, uh, said like I'm working in Desert National Park. So on this Guru Purnima day, I will like to take uh, a guide name. Uh, my guide is Dr. Manju Sirival. She is from Wildlife Institute of India. And my another guide is Dr. Sudhir Kumar. He is from CAT Lab. CAT is Center for Animal Taxonomy and Ecology, uh, which is in uh, Kerala. So uh, we mostly uh, the lab mostly work on uh, spiders. So today, like, uh, we will be seeing uh, things like how to describe any species from collection to publication. So the points we are going to cover today. Yeah, so here it is. Uh, so the points we are going to cover today is collection and preservation. Like how to collect any spiders when you see on field and which spiders to be collected. So in every arthropod it, or any animal taxa, it will be very difficult to describe any species with a juvenile. So we usually not collect the, those juvenile. So we will see what things to be considered while doing a collection. Next is preservation, like how to uh, preserve. So for spiders, mostly that is uh, wet preservation, uh, not like uh, butterflies or moth, that is dry preservation. So wet preservation is done for taxonomy is in 70%. So we will see that in detail, like how to preserve. Next thing is microscopic photography and measurements. So this microscopic photography is uh, basically uh, used for putting uh, it in publication and measurements. You would have seen any publication uh, with measurements given uh, a complete carapace, car how to draw a gen genitals using Photoshop. So there are two ways that is hand drawing and using some so softwares like Illustrator or Photoshop. So we'll see that. So we, here we go. So, so guys, like what uh, we have attended so many presentations in this lockdown. So what I thought here, I have made a story come presentation. So this will be a presentation, but we will go uh, to a journey. Like we all together, a spider enthusiast are going for a trip or the collection of spider. So we will collect and we will try to describe it. Okay, so I have taken an example of one spider, a jumping spider. We will see that. Now, just imagine like we all together in this one hour are going to a desert national park. So uh, for those who don't know where desert national park is, it is in Rajasthan, a Jaisalmer district. So it is a it is a it is in Thar Desert. So uh, we all are going there, and one day, early morning, we all go for a for searching spiders. Someone says, "Oh, here we can see the green patch." So they suggested that we should go and search spider here. So we go close, and we found. A beautiful scrubland. So we are all there. And yeah. now, in some time, we see so many spiders and we could identify them all. Looking at several characters, like for this spider, we identified it at looking their two legs, a prominent, a long leg, and sitting posture just like the crab spider. So we could identify this. So we didn't collect it because we knew that it is a common spiders and we knew the identification. So for those spider for which we know already know identification, please don't collect it. Next. Yeah. This spider is a wolf spider looking at their eye. 
just like a stalking wolf, just how wolves stalk. That's why its name is wolf cider. Looking at its behavior, a parental care. So we I could identify this species also. So we will not collect it. Next, another a spitting spider. Looking at the three pairs of eyes and a body pattern and a structure, a leg, a very thin leg. So we could identify this within. We could identify all the spider looking at particular characters like their eye, eye, eye pattern, or fangs or chelicerea, or their, or looking at their uh, spindles, their spindle size, and a web pattern. So we could identify so many of spider on field looking at this. So this we can say this could be an aranid because looking at the vertical orbit. But all of the sudden, we found a spider, and we all got confused, like which spider could be this. So we all plan we will collect it. So. Before collecting, we took images like their front image. That is very important. Second is lateral, and their dorsal images. Luckily, we got both male and female, so we collected it both. Now we think that this could be a interesting, in interesting find. So this images will be useful for uh, publication. So. Uh, uh, keep in mind, like if you want to collect a specimen and if you think that is interesting, uh, put live images in paper. Next, yeah, so we want to collect it. We use an append off and put inverted on the spider and we collect it. But we found one more spider which was interesting, but that was a juvenile. But we think we will not go again to Desert National Park. We want to collect it. So what we'll do for the juvenile spider, uh, if we want to collect it, we will collect it, collect it in a big wire, big container. So this can uh, and feed them with some flies or a house fly or something like that, and keep it for two or three months till the time it get mature, and after that we can preserve it. So we will get a mature specimen. Now, how to identify a mature specimen? For a male, look from the front, you will find a bulgy structure, which will just look like a boxing glove. That will be absent in female. You will not find that bulgy structure in the female, which is called as pedipal. So how to identify female? So for female, uh, if you see on the ventral side, you will find a sclerotized region, which is called as epigyne. That is female genital organ. So for um, this section, keep in mind this two things, like for the male, we have to dissect the left pulp, uh, that is male genital organ. For the female, we have to dissect this, that is female genital organ. Next. If you can identify it taking photographs, common spiders, don't collect it. But if you think like that is an interesting, then and you get multiple specimen, but one in ethanol and next in 90% uh, ethanol. So 70% ethanol will help you for taxonomic work and 90% for sequencing. And put a good a uh, label with the species name, collector name, uh, and then uh, hab habitat and location from where you have collected. Now we are going back to lab work. So we have collected our uh, specimen, that jumping spider, and we are going back to our lab for taxonomy work. So for the taxonomy, we use in stereo zoom microscope. So here is our male. So as I said, 
like we always dissect a left pulp so we will dissect the side pulp a left pulp because that is a uh, very uh, specific because in every paper you will find that people have dissected the left pulp and given illustrator and illustration and image of left pulp so now we will uh, dissect the left pulp so when you put uh, on the ventral side so this is the left pulp which has already been dissected here i will i will say like how to dissect it using a forceps you hold using one forceps you hold um this part with another forceps just hold the pulp and gently pull pull apart if suppose i want to dissect this i will hold it from here and hold the spider with another forceps and i will just pull pull it gently so it will come out so after it come out uh the next step is we taking good photograph and compare it so how to compare it so there are different part in uh, male genital organ we'll see that looking at the pattern of uh, the pulp the embolus and uh, the rta rta means retrotibial epiphysis that which is present on the right side on a tibia and epiphysis means extra group so retrotibial epiphysis this is called this is called as sperm duct and here you can see a symbiote so after dissecting just compare it with um, other spiders so whether uh, this is the same species or a different species so here we will compare it look at the embolus that is the first so this i have taken uh, for compare for comparison i have taken a common spiders that is plexippus petersi plexippus spiculi and plexippus uh, minor so compare the first embolus first so does it is matching with this no because in plexippus petersi embolus is very enlarged and very thick uh, uh, sorry very thin and enlarged we will see for plexippus spiculi here here also it is quite large but look at plexippus minor it is comparatively small and matching to this next thing we will see is rta so look at the rta of petersi it is just reaching to the half of uh, the symbiont so but here um, it is not reaching that half for the symbiont look at plexippus spiculi it is also like very very large but in plexippus minor it is just similar to this so looking at such thing we have to uh, make sure like whether the species we have collected is um, a different species or the same species one more thing look at the sperm duct it is a curve a very small curve look at this but in this two species plexippus minor and plexippus spiculi it is quite similar this species is named plexippus minor looking at their rta size look at their rta size here it is large here it is small also the embolus uh, embolus the size of embolus is very small compared to this it is very large so that's why um, uh, vesseloska map has described this as plexippus minor which looks similar to plexippus spiculi not in um, morphology but if you look at the main part then compare uh, the lateral side look at the rt yeah it is quite similar and look at the rt of this it's very long here uh, we can leave this it is very uh, comparatively very very long so uh, we could say like this is a uh, a pulp of plexippus minor so next thing is measurement so first we have collected 
second thing what we have done we have taken uh, we have compared it with uh, some species so we found it as plexippus minor now we, if we want to take uh, measurement um, so for that um, if you want to take a complete body measurement we will take it from uh, from here to here so for the complete body length and next is a carapace measurement so if we want to take a measurement for a carapace so this is the carapace so we will uh, measure use a vernier caliper for a big spider and a software i will show in next slide for small spider so we will measure from here to here same with the abdomen for uh, eye diameter and eye interdistance and uh, jellyfish i will show in next slide um, how to do that because for that we will need a software uh we can't do uh, using vernier caliper so next is measurement of leg so you have to measure all the four legs and in that four legs you, so leg of uh, spiders uh, is divided into seven part but for publication you will give only five region that is femur you will measure the distance of femur then patella then tibia metatarsus and tarsus so you will uh, take the measurements of this part for all the four leg you will take the leg formula what is leg formula if you would have seen in paper they give a leg formula that is fourth leg is the longest then the first then second and then third so third leg is the smallest then you have to count uh the number of uh spines present um on the leg so so here you can see this are hairs but a sharp up uh, and pointed and thick you know, hairy structure this this are this is called as uh, spines so you also have to mention those spines in the pa in papers so this is as we have seen this is femur and this patella so we will count the number of spines here it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 suppose this is first leg so we will mention on first leg on femur there are six spines so we have also have to see from the next uh, from the another uh, other side of it there will be some spines so from both the sides we should count here on this you can see some uh, some spine here also so this uh, spine spines also should be counted and uh, given in your publication next uh, is you can measure as i said using vernier caliper for uh, the complete body length using vernier caliper but for small spider like jumping spider with a microscope you get a, a software for measurement so in a click from if i want to uh, measure the complete body length so i will do first click here second here i will get a pop up with a complete measurement of the spider if i want to measure the carapace i will click first here second here and i will get a measurement for the carapace then i want to count uh, measure the width i want to uh, do a width uh, measure the width of this carapace so always uh, look at this like you measure it where uh, the carapace is very long don't measure it from here don't measure the carapace length from here always remember this part is uh, very large so uh, so we have to measure from the mid so that region will be large so i will click one here second here so i will get the measurement of uh, the width of the carapace same with the abdomen now next thing is a uh, very tricky thing if we want to measure the distance the diameter of eye so i'll uh, so you would have seen in papers they give the diameter of ame ame is anterior median eye so here you can see in this image this is principal eye that is anterior median eye next is anterior lateral eye posterior median eye and posterior lateral eye so if you want to measure the distance of uh, a diameter of this eye so what we will do that we will first click here second here so we will get the diameter of anterior median eye same with the anterior lateral eye and 
they also give the inter distance of i so if i want to measure the inter distance of ale ale that is anterior lateral i we will first click here second here so we will get the inter distance of anterior lateral i same suppose uh, i want to take the um, inter distance for the uh, posterior lateral i i will look this uh, i will put this spider from the dorsal side and i will click you can see this i here one here that is ele ple so we'll we click first here second here and we will get the inter distance of that i next same for the leg we want to uh, measure the distance of femur patella and uh, other part so we will do uh, same like a same for publication uh, it is very necessary to take good images so uh so you will take one dorsal image lateral so you will get to see uh, what pattern uh, are present on, on that species so you already have the live images and you also take a microscopic image so this all are the microscopic image so in that uh you will take a dorsal a lateral image then the if there is some pattern or some specific feature for uh carapace then you will take the images of carapace then uh, the front image uh then the images of pal pal you will take a uh, ventral uh, also the lateral and if leg have some characters then you have to take uh, you have to give that images also suppose you are studying a sudicious uh, like a species in from sudicious that is afra facilla so they have some characters like under their eye they have this uh, studiolatory organ a bristles so in the paper they usually count the number of uh, hairs or spines under the eyes so this a uh, bristles can only be seen in uh, some genus um, uh, which comes under sudicious so such specific character has to be uh, given in paper next how to do a uh, dissection for female so this is a uh, comparatively uh, tricky than male for the dissection of female uh, if you are starting dissection for the female uh, always pick uh, some good uh, big specimen uh for that dissection so what you have to do you have to remove this out this part is uh, you have to remove this female genital organ and study that so for that what you will do first hold the specimen using a forceps once you hold the specimen with a forceps using a see uh, a needle a surgical needle also you can you can mount the surgical needle in some uh, wooden stock also you can use a uh, insect pinning pin so what you will do with that you will hold this with forceps the specimen and make uh, some uh, holes near to the epigynous make punch, some punctures carefully you will not uh, put your pin on this so just make a square or a circle using a pin just uh, puncture it and if you if you pull it with a pin this epigyne will come out um what we follow is we completely remove uh, this this epigyne from the body and put it into um, a sodium hydroxide in aoh so what naoh do does is make sure that you put uh, in 30% naoh or less than that NOH is used so that this extra muscles on uh, on your genitalia will get dissolved. So you can see this very clearly. You can see this pattern very clearly. If suppose you just think if it is um, with full full with muscles, so you can't see it very clear. So for that, uh, for one hour or something, depend uh, upon how much muscles is there on on your epigyne. depending on that you put uh, an, under sodium hydroxide for 1 hour or 2 hour depending upon how much muscles is there if you 
put it for more more time it the complete epic and will get dissolved so make sure the concentration is low and the time to decide uh, you have to adjust with that then for uh, storing uh, keep this epic and in separate micro vial and put a cotton plug and a complete spider in some an, uh, other vial put the label into it and again a cotton plug so in in a separate container so that you will not miss uh, uh, this epic and or it will it will get lost and if it is holotype you have to be um, very uh, cautious about that then after putting it in any of which you will find a very clear epigyne so if you look from the ventral side uh, it is called as valva if you see it from inside so if you this part is called as epigyne uh, if you see internal part it is called as valva so this is epigyne of the spiders which we have collected and this is called as valva here is an copulatory opening so this is called as copulatory opening this copulatory opening is uh, from which a male puts an uh, embolus and eject sperm inside so it travels to an inseminization duct inside so this is from this is the image from inside so this is called as inseminization duct and goes to an spermatica this called go this uh, the round one is spermatica also make sure you uh, put this scale so this also you will get in with an uh, microscope now we will try to compare it our uh, specimen so we will start with an copulatory opening see the position of copulatory opening here it is like a scale a straight copulatory opening and present it is it is in the middle but if we see this is the epigyne of plexippus spiculi the common common spider so here you can see the opening are uh, separate a very uh, this it doesn't match with this also look at the uh, epigyne of plexippus petersi also in this also it is it doesn't matches with this they also have a hairpin hook like structure a hairpin structure in both a plexippus petersi and plexippus pericul which is not present in this and here it have a diamond shaped structure uh, in our spider what we have dissected but which can't be seen here it is something different and in this there is no gap so we can say it is not this two species it is something else so we have to compare it with other plexippus so how you confirm genus you see it is like it is looking similar so uh, we have to compare it with other gen uh, genus if it is very close to this then we can say this is plexippus and for confirming species we have to uh, compare the um, part like spermatica or the opening is very similar so uh, i have taken a picture uh, taken by abhijit and many others of prestovia thank you abhi for the images uh, so here you can see that why we not confirm species looking at images so here you see there are two to three species of bristovia this is one genus uh, in salt acid it is called as bristovia only three spe uh, species is uh, reported so can you say like uh, which which species is uh, what if you see the pattern here this species is present in china and abhi has reported it from uh, from his place so which is very different uh, from uh, the species so but we can't confirm it looking at only the habitus or uh, looking at only the images from uh, the live images for that we have to do dissection so here we see a uh, three species uh, of of bristovia that is bristovia afra 
Bristovia Gandhi and Spina. So Afra, Bristovia Afra is present in Africa. Gandhi is present in India, Bristovia Gandhi, and Heterospina is present in China and those region. So we will try to compare the embolus first. Try to compare this, uh, this, uh, this is if we look all the three together, we will say that this is the same species. But look at the close, look at the embolus. Yeah, this is very small. This is also very small embolus, but this is very large embolus. So we will exclude this out. We'll compare in this two, whether these two are the same species or a different species. But look at this embolus. It is very straight, but here it is curved. You see that it is curved. Then the next thing we will compare the RTA. Look at the RTA. It is pro protruding outside, but here it is very uh, close to the symbiom and, the, and here too. Um, so we can say, looking at the embolus and RTA, these two are different species. These three are different species. Also, we'll try to compare uh, the vulva. Look at uh, the inseminization duct, so, which is very long here. In this two, it is quite, this two is quite similar, but looking at the male, we can say these two are different species. So, so here is an another example for that. This is a common, common spider that is Telemonia demidata. We all would have seen this. Uh, next is uh, Telemonia festiva and Telemonia hasselti. So we will try to compare this. I didn't got uh, the live images of hasselti. So we will try to compare uh, looking at this two. Like they look, yeah, they look different. Uh, so uh, we will compare uh, with the, their pal. Look at their embolus first. So here it is very thin and inside the symbiom, but here it is very thin, but going outside the symbiom. Here you can see a curve. So yeah, we can say like that is the first difference. Second difference, look at the RTA. Uh, it, here it is a bit curved, straight and completely uh, here it is taking a right turn. Next is looking, look at the um, sperm duct from where it is starting. So it is starting from the middle. Here it is starting from this part. So that is a difference. Look at the species. It is starting, uh, the sperm duct is starting from some other place. In all three species, it is starting from some different uh, place. So looking at that, we can say all three are different species. So uh, why it is very difficult to say, uh, looking at um, the spider about the species. Here, this is a female of Chrysalia vulpi. Look at the morph. They have so many morphs. Yeah, here we have only five images, but there are many more morphs than this. All are same species with so many morphs. So it is very difficult to say uh, for the species looking at uh, only at the images. The next thing is how to deposit, how to deposit uh, your specimen uh, in National Museum. Always remem remember you do deposit because in future if someone wants to study uh, those samples so they can directly find a National Museum. So uh, museums like ZSI, BNHS or NCBS uh, asking for a catalog number, which is very, uh, um, very much required uh, these days. So uh, you ask for a catalog number and uh, in some days you will get uh, that catalog number and you can put it in your species and you can deposit by going personally to museum or you can uh, post it. Some museum like NCBS, they don't take uh, that post. You personally have to go. But uh, for BNHS, I, decide, uh, I think uh, we can do post. Uh, so here we go uh, for the last part that is taxonomic drawing. So uh, it, which is very simple to draw. You can draw uh, by manually uh, using pen paper a pencil paper and you can use a software like uh, Photoshop or Illustrator. So today we'll be, we will be seeing how to draw using Photoshop. 
So wait a second, I will just change the sharing. So here I start a Photoshop. Okay. So uh, we will draw a same male uh, pulp, which we have collected. So we will be drawing this male pulp. I will show uh, this I have already drawn. So in this, uh, we'll try to draw. For that, how to open an image using in Photoshop, you all would have used for uh, Photoshop. So you know how to open uh, some images. For that, click on file. First select the layer, what size, which size layer you want. So what I prefer always is A3 size. So it is already A3. I click on create. So I will get an um, A3 size page. So here it is. I got an A3 size page. Then I will take a image I want to draw. So I click on file and next is open. Once I click on open, I will get uh, images I want to draw. So here you can see I've drawn. Uh, so uh, you got uh, the image. Now you have to overlay and layer on it so that you can trace this. Always remember it is good to trace because you will get exactly what images image uh, you have put. So for tracing that, the next thing what you have to do is overlay and one more layer on it. If you see here, I'm putting a layer on it. So I got one layer on this. Next thing, take a bucket, paint bucket. So using a bucket tool and make sure your uh, color here it is white and just overlay that. So I have overlay a white uh, a wi uh, white uh, color on it so that I uh, finally I will get an Im image with this uh, white background. Now what we have to do here you can see an opacity. You have to reduce this opacity to zero. Here there is your layer, but you can't see it, but you can, you can see the image, what you want to trace. Now using control and plus, you can zoom in the image. So in this, you can see very clearly, this is the ambulance. Here it is an RTA. And this is sperm duct, uh, symbium. This is called a stagulum. Now select an pen tool for uh, making an outline. So here I always prefer a curvature in pen tool. Uh, you can use any of the pen tool. For curve, usually we use the curve curvature. So here we start with this. So I will, I'm using the curve curvature. And, and now zoom in. I want to start with this. You can see a U shape here. First here, second here, and I can do this curve here. Here it is long, a big curve. So I will do this. I'm drawing very casual ears, but you be very um, cautious like how you are drawing it. Let it take time, but do, draw very specific. Now click on to next. And so I'm drawing first only embolus here. So you drop very properly looking at the shape. So we have completed our drawing of embolus. And now likewise, you have to complete uh, uh, the complete for all after select the uh, selecting and make sure, I forgot to say this, like when you select a pen tool, here, there should there are three options, path and shape, and also the pixels. Always select this uh, shape option. And in fill, select no fill. For stroke, uh, select uh, the normal stroke. 
here you can select the size uh, size for uh, for for uh, for this for the line so here i have choose you can select it whatever you want i have choose 0.05 then you have many option for uh, drawing a, a line so what i have choose here is a simple plain line after selecting this press enter after pressing enter what you will see you got the entire ambulance drawn now go to this and make opacity 100% and again control 0 for uh, making it um, a complete page so here we got an embolus likewise you have to draw a complete uh, pulp uh, using the same method now only you have drawn an outline next thing what you have to do is pick a brush using a brush for before that select one more layer and put it on top right stippling what we are doing is now we are making the dot you would have seen in images like they uh do a small uh, stippling using pencils so here in one click using a brush for stippling so here there is an option for stippling so you just select a brush i've already selected uh the stippling op option in and the brush so after selecting a brush there are many option which brush you want to select i have already selected the stippling so i will start doing that so you can see for the ambulus here it is dark and on this base uh, which is uh, very light using stippling brush you can just draw on this you can just stipple on this so whether where it is dark you can draw more stippling where it is light you can reduce it so uh, you have to give time for this and uh, draw very very properly so here it is very vague stippling but uh, if you draw it very properly uh, you will get a good illustration illustrator uh, let me see if i can uh, share yeah here it is so if finally what you will get is like this if you give time and draw it properly make sure the region which is very dark you do more stippling there and here you can see this is very dark this region is very dark so i have done uh, more of stippling here this part is dark so you uh, have to shade it like that uh, there is no need of uh, drawing hairs in taxonomy but it look very good if you draw so, um, likewise uh, so if you can use a youtube for uh, for this i have learned from youtube then in plexippus this is very common like you see a zigzag shape here so you would do the same and also put a scale of same we see uh -huh. only a photoshop window sorry we still see your photoshop uh, software okay. not the other I'm slides sorry. i'm sorry wait a minute yeah yeah thank can you can you see here yes thank you yeah sorry so uh, what i was saying is uh, the region where it is very dark so do more stippling on, on those region so it is the same as image what we try to draw and what i was saying like if there is no need of this drawing this hairs if you not draw it it is fine for your paper and this is a sperm duck 
here you can see it is uh, very light here so i have done less so it just look like uh, a tube or a duct so abhijit i think it is done thank you yeah.